Hi, my name is Jessica Lawrence and I'm Director of Care and Guidance. I want to talk a little bit today about creating shared partnership and addressing resistance. This is a pretty brief recording and the QR code will bring you to a set of resources. It will bring you to a PDF of this presentation, as well as scenarios, which I'll refer to at the end, um, a list of competencies and an act or a um, article around addressing resistance and helping educators overcome resistance to change. So hopefully those will be helpful to you. I usually start by talking about Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point. It's an excellent book that allows people to think about how we create change in a community, how things kind of tip, how trends tip um, and become a trend. Um, and so if you think about the work around school health or whole child, how do you create a trend, but something that is really kind of sustainable over time? Um, so I like this quote uh, from the book, if you want to bring a fundamental change in people's belief and behavior, you need to create a community around them where those new beliefs can be practiced, expressed and nurtured. So what we're talking about is sometimes people are resistant to change because they're set up to fail, they're not set up to be successful, they're not supported. And so really thinking about how we address resistance to create that shared partnership is really important. So some of the, the things that I'll kind of discuss uh, during this brief webinar, discuss how to create buy-in shared partnership in your school or community, why people are resistant to change and practice what to say when creating shared partnership, because this isn't a live is not a live webinar. Uh, the activities are in the resources in that Google folder. If you use that QR code, and you're welcome to go through and do those exercises as a team or individually to help you with this point and these objectives. So if you consider what are ways that you create support for your school health or other initiatives. Um, it could be that you have a hashtag um, and you use social media to create support. It could be through a newsletter. Um, it could be that you meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. It could be that you've um, invited partners to a council or committee meeting and they have uh, participated in your initiative that way. Um, the first step of systems change is building awareness. And so, um, you know, how are you going to tell families and partners and even internal to your staff um, you know, that we want to work on whole child work and that we believe that, you know, health and learning are inextricably linked, um, you're going to have to make the case and um, assure that changes will mean that um, there could be some discomfort, um, but make a case for those changes. So, for example, if you have water filling stations added to the halls, and uh, students are drinking more water, which is, we know, cognitively great for their brain, they could be using the restroom more, uh, which might cause some disruption. Um, and so making the case for, um, you know, a hydrated brain um, over, uh, you know, students having to, to go to the restroom for a bio break, you know, what's more important there? And so really, you know, continuing to make the case, listening to people's concerns and addressing those concerns is really a key piece to addressing that resistance. And then I'm sure you've seen ways that uh, you shouldn't create buy-in um, and create partnerships uh, where you know you, people don't create partnerships um, and what have you seen, experienced, witnessed. Obviously, since we're not on a live webinar, we can't write those things in a chat, um, but overall kind of considering you know, what, what have you seen that hasn't worked so well? Um, and usually it's you know, not making a case for the change, uh, poor leadership, um, haven't set people up to be successful, have not offered professional development, have not offered solutions. And in some cases, leadership just hasn't listened. Um, once you listen and demonstrate that you're willing to listen, usually people are more likely to adopt or maintain a new innovation. So for the self-assessment, um, there is a document in the resources, and I'm going to actually toggle over to it so that you can see an example of what um, this folder looks like, since this um, uh, webinar is um, very reliant on these activities. So the folder at the QR code at the beginning brings you to these four documents, including the PDF of this presentation, and also this competency document. I think doing an, a self-assessment um, on 
you know, what are your school health competencies um, to bring a school health initiative on board and create those shared partnerships. Uh, what are you, what's your content knowledge around some of these key pieces? Um, what are, what are your leadership skills and um, your communications and promotion that you have in place and the collaboration skills you have in place? Um, so I would encourage you to kind of think about these pieces um, because that is going to be one key way to really consider you know how to bring folks on and create that shared partnership. Um, where are your gaps and where might you need some support? Um, and again, in this Google folder, there's a great resource and tool. Um, this is a very good article about addressing resistance among educators. Uh, so that might be helpful for you as well to review that. So just some suggestions and things to think about when you're uh, working on this work um, and trying to create that shared partnership. Um, you know, what what is your leadership need? Um, some leadership to make the case needs policy in place. Uh, some of them will need data um, and some of them will need to hear the stories. So students talking about how hydrate, dehydrated they are during the school day um, might actually be a better pitch um, than showing the data of uh, how dehydrated students are. Um, and so the stories is a, is a key piece um, to our work in school health. Could be a family story, could be a student story, a uh, student that's hungry and needs uh, breakfast during the classroom versus before school. So, um, you know, consider what your leadership needs in order to create that shared partnership with them. Align your work to education priorities and accountability measures. So those could be test scores, graduation rates, um, and attendance. And if those are the major accountability measures in your district or school, it could also be literacy. Um, how are the things of school health that you're doing actually impact those and support those? Know how to market your initiative. So again, I talked about a, a hashtag, social media. I really encourage schools and districts. Um, they don't have to come up with a whole, uh, you know, um, social media strategy, uh, but overall, maybe having at least a Twitter page and a hashtag, a handle, and then a hashtag that you use and encourage others to use um, because that leverages and amplifies your voice. Trying to figure out what the reason for the resistance is. Um, so, asking questions about it, doing a needs assessment can be really important. Gathering social information. So, who knows who in a community can lead to the relationships and creating shared partnership. And then, you know, use research, use things that we know are effective uh, to work in the work of school health. I take a deeper dive into these 10 components around sustainability in the sustainability webinar, uh, which you can access on our YouTube channel as well with care and guidance. Um, but these are also components that you might want to consider when you're thinking about how to create um, you know, shared partnership and address resistance. Um, if you try and get someone to be a, the champion and lead a council or a committee, a school health council or committee, that's awesome. Um, and um, you know, how do you decrease burnout, making sure you have organizational capacity and resource stability um, and partnerships in place and making sure that you're ready um, and that your community is ready is going to, um, you know, help support that person. So um, these are really important components and I encourage you to listen to the webinar on sustainability uh, that takes a deeper dive into each of these. And then finally, uh, the scenarios, um, I'm going to toggle back to um, my, um, sorry, my Google folder so that you're able to see this again. So here are the scenarios. Um, these are different scenarios in which you could kind of review and discuss how you might create shared partnership if there's some resistance. So scenario one, you're being asked by your principal to present your new school health goal to the school board of education. You have two board members that love policy. The rest are very fiscally responsible. So uh, what are your four main talking points? Scenario two, you've received some dollars. Your principal has asked for you to present to the staff. How do you create excitement and buy-in? Uh, scenario three, you're a wellness champion. Um, and you want to approach the school because you're a parent and what might be the three talking points to start some school health work as a parent. Uh, principals not bought into your passion around school health, um, but you do have the support of the superintendent. So what can you do to kind of address the principal's uh, concerns or someone that isn't very passionate? 
And then scenario five, you have three different school health programs going on. Um, so you have an after school Zumba for staff, a new health ed curriculum and shifting recess before lunch, but you don't have a lot of engagement and support. So what might you do to bring awareness to these initiatives and possibly find some supportive staff? So just three different scenarios to maybe think through um, and brainstorm um, some solutions. So finally, this is me, Jess Lawrence. You can contact me at jess at karenguidance.com. Again, this is the QR code that will bring you to that Google folder, uh, where again, you'll see a PDF of this presentation, the competencies, uh, and a, a, a um, article on key strategies helping educators overcome resistance to change, and then the scenario. Thank you so much for listening to this webinar.